Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and a big feminist. I'm also a huge fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day I'm going to share one of my favorite deep cuts with you, so let's take a look at today's story. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365 with MXM Tune. Today, in 1872, Illinois became the first state to require sexual equality in employment. That means that during the hiring process, it became legally mandated that men and women must be treated equally. It's been a long road towards equal treatment of all genders in the workplace, and we still have a lot of work to do. More on that later, but for now, let's take a look back on the legacy of this then-progressive piece of legislation. It all started in 1869. This was just four years after the end of the Civil War and the emancipation of slavery, and the United States was going through its Reconstruction era, when civil rights were at the forefront of national discussion. Myra Bradwell petitioned the Illinois Supreme Court for a license to practice law, but her request was denied because she was a woman. The Supreme Court wrote that they had no doubt in her legal abilities, but they thought that it wasn't their place to decide whether or not women can practice law. That's kind of wild, coming from the literal state Supreme Court, but go off, I guess. The state court said, quote, To permit women to engage in the trial of cases in court is a question opening a wide field of discussion, which is not necessary for us to enter. They deflected the issue, suggesting that Bradwell pursue options to amend the laws that prevented them from granting her the right to practice law. It's both infuriating and oddly comforting to know that even in the 1800s, government bureaucracy still made little to no logical sense. After that more than disappointing experience, Bradwell appealed to the Illinois court's decision and took her case to the United States Supreme Court. Still, they wouldn't budge. Supreme Court Justice Joseph P. Bradley said that, quote, the domestic sphere belongs to the domain and functions of womanhood. That's disgusting. And I wouldn't blame Bradwell if she were discouraged after being shut down like that by the Supreme Court. But amazingly, she kept fighting for the rights she knew that she deserved. Along with Alta Mae Hewlett and other Illinois women, Bradwell finally got her wish in 1872, when Illinois became the first state to pass legislation that prevented sex discrimination in hiring. Soon after, Hewlett became the first woman admitted to the Illinois bar. It wasn't until 1964 that the rest of the country would follow suit with the Civil Rights Act. The Civil Rights Act established the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, which helped prevent workplace discrimination. The EEOC is responsible for making sure that no one is denied job opportunities on the basis of sex, gender, race, ability, national origin, and more. Of course, the story doesn't end here, though. In 1923, Alice Paul and Crystal Eastman wrote the first version of the Equal Rights Amendment, a proposal to alter the U.S. Constitution to grant women all the same rights as men. This was four years after the passage of the 19th Constitutional Amendment, which granted women the right to vote. But activists like Alice Paul didn't think that this would be enough to guarantee that women would be treated equally. So the Equal Rights Amendment would help make sure that gender equality extended into all realms of life not just the polling booth. Still, some women opposed the bill, believing that it would cause women to be drafted into the military. Ultimately, the bill was never passed, but many of the sexist practices that inspired the bill are now obsolete. Still, there has been renewed interest in passing the ERA in recent years, since the Constitution still does not explicitly grant equal rights regardless of sex. It's also worth noting that the language in these legislations granting equal treatment on the basis of sex, fail to acknowledge that sex and gender are not synonymous and that there are more than two genders. Trans and non-binary people are still fighting for legal protections that protect them from harassment and discrimination. For example, there's no constitutional law that prevents discrimination on the basis of gender identity or sexual orientation in public places like restaurants or stores. 
We've made great strides since Illinois first allowed women to become lawyers in 1872, but we still don't live in a country that grants constitutional equality to every single person. So let's celebrate how far we've come, yet keep working hard for change. Now let's talk about music. On this day in 2013, Australian singer-songwriter Vance Joy released his first EP, God Loves You When You're Dancing. The five-song debut charted at number one on the Australian Artist Singles Chart, and by May, the 26-year-old musician signed a five-album record deal with Atlantic in the United States. He went on to open up for Taylor Swift in 2014, and when he re-released his song Riptide from his debut EP, he became cemented as a rising star. By 2015, the upbeat indie pop song became the second longest charting song in the history of the Billboard Hot 100. And now for our final segment, I'm going to be looking at my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a March 22nd in my life. So beyond playing Animal Crossing's last March 22nd in uh, 2020 at the beginning of a pandemic, I also went on a road trip with my friends to Santa Cruz. Um, It was very fun. We went to the mystery spot, which is like a total tourist gimmick about, you know, some physics thing or whatever, where like a ball rolls up the hill and it looks like it's downhill or whatever. But it was very fun. I like miss doing those things. I miss seeing my friends. I miss going on road trips with them. I miss making plans with them. And I'm really, really excited for the day that I get to do that again too. Thanks for going back in time with me and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. You can come back tomorrow for more stories from the past. It's 365 with MXM2 facts every day so don't leave too soon i'm gonna teach you stuff no it won't be tough gonna go a year till you've had enough it's 360